morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Did anybody come to praise the Lord this morning? and righteous name. 
the minute permission today is a little different than a normal minute permission. Basically, it's for information. Uh, some of you have seen the rezoning signs out on Ryan Road. And um, with this, there's a lot of changes getting ready to take place. So we want to make our members and let them make their neighbors aware of what is about to take place. Um, one development has already been approved by City Council, which is 100, it's a million square foot of warehouse and business park, which will be down by the curb, just before you get to the curb going this way on Ryan Road. The next project is Piedmont Natural Gas is going to build their customer operations center next to Victory Sugar Lake. We're not sure how this is going to impact the church, but we know it is because we all know what the traffic is like out here already. Uh, what we don't want is their buildings to look like they're in 2023 and we're in 1950. So we want to make sure that we're aware of what's going on and see how we can figure out how we can preserve our, especially our graveyard, because we've had many accidents in the graveyard. We get a barrier, see if we can get a barrier or something around that. We have other things that are affecting the church, like the water runoff. And so we just wanted to make you aware that this is going to take place. And there is an organization that actually meets with these builders and their attorneys, and it is the Northwest Community Alliance Group. You can become a member. So if you need more information, see me at the service, and I'll pass it on. Thank you. Do we have any guests this morning? If you would, if we do, please stand and state your name.
Shall the flock and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether or not my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Our New Testament scripture is coming from Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 27 through 39. Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 27 through 39. You have it? Say, let's go. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest and asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not? teach in this name and behold you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostle answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hung on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do also touching these men. For be, before these days rose up, Thetis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about our 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and also even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it is of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found even to fight against God. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God remains forever. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you that you've been a, a great God in you. You've kept us. God, we've had a thousand tongues. We couldn't thank you enough for all that you've done. Open our hearts and our, our minds and our souls so that we can, we can be receptive of your word. 
word. Now just moments. Fill us, O oh God, and send your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray.
from a greater distance, and then he would try to get out of the way before the opponent could try to hit him. The match would usually go to the opponent who had more strength, more stamina, more endurance, more hits, and more power. For if the boxer hits his opponent forcefully with a lot of power, he could knock him out. And a knockout would be declared when the opponent is unconscious or unable to finish the match by the count of ten. And it's hard to win when you are boxing against a stronger, more capable, a wiser, more powerful, and an all-knowing opponent. So I come this morning with the sermon title. Your arms are too short to box with God. Your arms are too short to box with God. This title is taken from a stage play called Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God. <laughs> and it opened in 1976. And it had 429 performances. Now what the title of this play is saying is that God is sovereign. He is all-knowing and he has all power in his hands. And no matter what you might be going through, God is able. No matter what you've already gone through, God was there. No matter what you might be praying for, God hears your prayer. No matter what your motives or your mannerism, God still loves you in spite of your flaws and in spite of your failures. God will do whatever he wants to do. He does not need your permission. God is God and he's God all by himself. He does not need you to try to micromanage what he does. And if and when you find yourself trying to ramble with God, you will find that God will win every time. God is in control and he is going to win. He's going to get the glory. Know that your arms are too short to box with God. You don't have the stamina, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the power, you don't have enough strength or endurance when you get in the ring with God. You don't have the reach that my God has when it, coming, when it comes to winning the battle. He can reach way down, pick you up. He can reach way down and find you no matter where you are, who you are, or your circumstances. And in our Old Testament scripture for, the, for today, the Israelites are rebelling and complaining like they always do. They want meat to eat like they had when they were in Egypt. They miss all the vegetables and the good food that they had that they were given while they were in captivity in Egypt. God has already set a fire that has burned the outskirts of their camp because he was angry with the people, always complaining. They're still complaining. They want meat. How ungrateful. They're complaining, and this has angered God, but Moses spoke up for the people and told God that the burden of the people was not necessarily on him, or on me. How am I, Moses, supposed to be able to feed all these people? 600,000. God promises Moses that he's going to send meat. Now, Moses is questioning God's ability to deliver this promise of having meat to last for at least a month to feed 600,000 Israelites. God responded to Moses by saying, Is the Lord's power limited? Do you not know who I am? Do you know who you are talking to? Do you have the audacity to question my abilities? Now you shall see whether 
whether my word will come true for you or not. And of course, God delivered. He sent quails to come as meat for the Israelites. But before they could consume them, God sent a plague. But God was true to his promise. He delivered the meat. You see, God can do whatever he pleases. The people are complaining. They are ungrateful. They want this. They want that. They want things to go like they want. Like some of us. No matter where we are in life, we still complain and not satisfied with our situation. The more we get, the more we want. You see, God can change things. God can come and make our situations better, or God can come and make our situation much worse. He can snatch us out of our comfort zone and cause our situation to become almost unbearable. Yes, God can change things, and we need to get off our high horses and realize that it's not about us. Amen. It's about God and Amen. God's plan for us. Yeah. That's why it's always best to just count your blessings. Yeah. Name them one by one. Yeah. Look and see what God has already done. Yeah. It's always better to give God praise and glory no matter what your situation is. Yeah. God can change your situation in a twinkling of an eye. That's why we give him glory and acknowledge that he is master and created, creator of all things. You see, the Israelites had already seen the power of God's arm. They had already seen what God could do. But in spite of, they kept disbelieving. They kept on complaining. They kept on losing their faith. And they kept on throwing jabs at God. And God let them know, I'm the one. That's in charge. Your arms are too short to box with me. You can't go blow for blow with God. You find yourself in some situation you don't never want to be in. Then in our New Testament scripture, Acts 5th chapter, 27 through 39, Peter and another apostle were put in prison for teaching in the name of Jesus. They told the high priest that they must obey God rather than man. Some of the people on the council wanted to kill them for their strong convictions about Jesus, but there was one Pharisee on the council whose name was Gamaliel who spoke up for them and said, I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. Gamaliel convinced the council to leave them alone, and therefore they were not thrown into prison. Church, it's a terrible thing to try to fight against the very one that has always been there for you. The one who's always stood by your side and who's always made a way for you. The one who always seemed to help you work things out. The one who's been there for you through thick and thin. It's a terrible thing for somebody to try to bite the hand that feeds them. Church, without God, we would be nothing. Without God, we would fail. Without God, we would be nothing, just like a ship without a sail. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Kept by Jesus. Church, we don't know what tomorrow brings. But 
only know who brings tomorrow. Yes, 
he realized that God can do as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the people of earth. He realized that no one can hold back God's hand or say, what have you done? For God is not accountable to us. We are accountable to God.
and tribulations pressing you down on every side. Round eight, you're going to find yourself slipping and a slide, peeping and a hiding, because you're not standing on firm foundation. Round nine, you're going to find yourself getting knocked out. You fallen and you can't get up. Knocked out with no idea of who you are, where you are. No idea of your purpose in life. No knowledge of who God is. Knowing that God is a miracle worker. He's powerful and almighty. Don't try to box with God because your arms are too short. God has the longer reach. Church, so I come this morning to tell you To trust in God. Yeah. He's a mighty good God. He's got a longer reach. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He sees you no matter where you are or what you do. He knows all about you. And he can do anything but fail. Don't you give up. Oh my God, just trust him. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. He can fix it and make it all right. Because he got all power. All power in his mighty hand. We need to put out problems in the master's hand.
Let us pray. Father God, we come once more and again at your throne, oh God, thanking you for all that you've done. Oh God, you are a mighty God. Oh God, you've brought us a, a mighty long way. And oh God, we, we say thank you for how you have kept us and, and never left us. And, and when things seem grim and things seem like it just wasn't going to work out and we weren't going to make it out of God. in the world. 
Hallelujah.